Okay, I'm back again, and today we're going to remove this. Uh, well, actually, I'm going to pre-remove this uh, radiator from the quad, and then I'm just going to show you it with me installing the new radiator into the quad. Um, we're going to go ahead and flush and fill the the antifreeze with Amsoil antifreeze, and then he's got a little bit of a heat issue that I think is caused by the painted cylinder. Um, so we're going to add some of the Dominator coolant boost to it that could drop the temperature about 25 degrees in the engine. You know, it's real good around here, especially once you get in the deep woods um, and you're idling and you're hanging out and you're talking and your quad's still running and you have no airflow down in the woods. It'll really cut back some of the heat from that uh, through the antifreeze. But yeah, what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and remove this radiator. It does have a small leak in it. Uh, it looks like it's leaking from the fins down below and then we'll install this ra new radiator and it, the radiator said that it should cut the temperature by like 20 20 percent but it's hard to say I, I mean it makes sense with an aluminum radiator but yeah I uh, also have some silicone hoses that did not come with the kit that were extra that you know you can get the, the best thing about this this quad uh, these quads, the KFX 400, the DVX 400, and the uh, LTZ 400, is man, the parts are plentiful and they're reasonably priced. So if you're looking at one of these quads on a budget, I'll tell you what, I just pulled the trigger and get it because these sport quads, they're, they've got plenty of power, they're, they're basically bulletproof, they're, they're known for reliability, and the parts are plentiful. So yeah, I'm real happy. I, I might end up buying one of these. Um, just not real sure yet because I don't have a lot of time. The, the whole house the whole house thing is just blowing my mind with the remodel and getting it up for sale. So, um, yeah, let's get into this and get this aluminum radiator on there and get this old one off of there. And then uh, hopefully get this thing rolled out next week. Uh, I, we will be doing, I'll be doing the brakes for sure and then the oil change for sure. And I'll probably show you how to adjust the the chain on this quad but yeah I got it running so I'm ready to get it out of here all right So what we have now is we're going to uh, install all the pieces onto the radiator and get it ready to install. So this is going to be pretty simple here. Um, what I'll do is, because I am just so limited for space and I, I, can't, I, can, I have a camera on a tripod, so it's near impossible to get the camera angles that I need. I, I have to get a bigger garage. But uh, what I'll do is I'll throw some pictures up here, you know, as I'm doing this. So. Uh, first things first for the fan you you have two clips that you're going to install back onto the radiator so that your bolts for the fan actually work and plug into the radiator there's actually three clips there will be three clips um, for the fan so your screws go through it and then you also have these rubber grommets <laughs> and there's three of these rubber grommets and what you want to do is take out the the metal pin in between and then install the rubber grommets into the radiator like so. and then put your pins in after the grommets are installed. 
sometimes you have to use a screwdriver, but you want to be careful with the screwdriver because you don't want to rip the grommets. So don't use uh, don't 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 use too much force in putting these grommets in there. There you go, you got all three there. And then you have your metal pins. You're going to stick your metal pins in there for your bolts. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and install the thermo sensors. And when I when I remove the thermo sensors, I actually marked them top and bottom so I knew which one was going where. So you'll want to unplug your thermo sensors on your unit before you remove them so you don't twist the cables up. And we're just going to get them snug in here. There's just an O-ring gasket for each one of them. You don't want to tighten them too much or they'll leak. And just reinstall your water temperature sensors and then you're going to tighten them. And the top one I think was a 23 millimeter and the bottom one I just used a large, um, I used a large crescent wrench to get them undone. And just kind of snug them up. Now you got to remember we're messing with uh, we're messing with aluminum radiator, not steel now, which is a softer metal. So we're just going to get them snug onto the radiator. I'm going to go ahead and keep the caps that came with it, um, just in case these leak. They they did come supplied with little O-rings on them, so we'll just um, figure that out, and then we'll just reinstall the fan here which is three bolts onto the clips. And then we're pretty much done with that. What you want to do is you'll want to just put each one of these in and don't snug them down. Put them all in and then tighten them back up. And they're actually a Phillips. They're a Phillips head, but I just recommend using a 10 millimeter socket to make sure you get them tight. You don't have to go too overly tight. And now you're just going to tighten those screws up. And you'll put your, uh, your fan flow through the housing here for the drain in case there's any water or fluid that gets in there. It'll take it and kick it out the drain. I'm just going to go back and kind of make sure everything's secure. Okay, and we're ready to reinstall. And since I have everything off here, I'm actually going to install the the, the top uh, silicone hose first before we put the radiator in, just onto the cylinder head, and then the bottom one I'll probably put on the radiator and then go to the engine here. Um, also, if you want, uh, there is a drain on the water pump. It's an eight millimeter. It's uh, I, I recommend draining it. I was a little weary on draining it. I pulled these out on these four wheelers that have sat for so long and the bolt deteriorates and then it just all of a sudden breaks off or the threads get all screwed up. But I went ahead and pulled it. And if, if you're going to pull this eight millimeter uh, drain plug on the bottom of the water pump, you need to make sure that you put a brand new copper washer on it. Otherwise, it will 
uh, leak but if you try to reuse a copper washer. I've had it happen many times. Spend the dollar and get the copper washer before you do this. That way you don't have any problems. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and get the, the, hose, the hose put on and then uh, we'll put the radiator back in. And now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and get the radiator put back in place. After you have all three bolts put in and snug, then go back and tighten them up, but you need to make sure that all the holes are lined up. And while we're on this side, we'll go ahead and remove this rubber cap and get this line put on. I actually had to purchase on eBay a new um, radiator shroud protector. And then don't forget also to go ahead and get your, uh, your front cylinder head one tight as well while you're over here. And while we're over here, we're going to go ahead and put this puke tank back on, on this side and hook it up to the radiator. And your overflow, don't forget to hook your overflow. There's a notch inside the radiator. Um, let's put the hose. Then we're just going to reinstall our two 10 millimeter nuts. Just snug these up, they don't need to be so tight that you break it. Then we're going to run our overflow, our puke tank hose back through the top 
up to the radiator cap. Now just don't take your time doing this. You wanna you wanna do this as you know in, in a timely fashion. Don't do this stuff in a rush, because then, then you might end up missing something or break something, but don't forget to check the links below, and if you uh, need oil, antifreeze, brake fluid, anything, use uh, buy AMS oil. Use dealer number five five four one four six zero. If these videos help you out, it really helped me out if you purchase that. So, um, what what we'll do is we'll get the rest of this hooked back up here. Now, don't forget you need to. This is this is the hose from your puke tank. You're going to want to reinstall that. And also your electrical connections. Don't forget about those. Those have to be plugged in. here and take this clamp off and now we will install our final hose here they printed the name of the company that this hose comes from backwards on this hose So now what we're going to do is uh, fill the radiator up. Now I've already got this pre-mixed. And as you're filling it up, you want to keep an eye on your hoses and look for leaks. Okay, and what we're going to do now is we're going to come to the side here and we're going to squeeze the hoses. And if there's any air in the hoses, then it's going to push the air into the radiator. This way you avoid having air lock in your system. And we haven't ran it yet, but the water should the antifreeze should go down a little bit. And then add more antifreeze. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the ATV with the radiator cap off and allow it to be pulled into the engine and we're not going to run it very long. <laughs>
going to go over to the puke tank and I'm going to fill the puke tank. and start up and run it again after filling the puke tank up. And then I'm going to uh, put the cap on. Now I'm going to let it run. So I'm going to let it cool down and uh, then I'll add the Dominator coolant boost into it and then we'll check the level in the radiator again and probably open the cap and run it just to make sure no air is in it and then put the cap back on and we should be good to go. So yeah, let's give it a few minutes. It's hot and that exhaust without that baffle and all that stuff, the packing all wore out. It sounds like a turd.
so everything's pretty much together and ready to go. Uh, yeah, I, I would imagine that this aluminum radiator is a big difference compared to the OEM steel one. And these these can be had. I got this for 59 bucks on eBay. So uh, it's a direct replacement. It's built right to spec. I didn't have any problems fitting it. But, yeah, this, this little deal here went pretty good. And I'm ready to get this thing out of here. But we need to add the, the coolant boost to this. And it's a little warm. And it only requires two ounces. And this is a 16 ounce bottle. And what this does is this acts, it basically takes, I believe, the oxygen out of the antifreeze and reduces, can reduce the temperatures up to 25 degrees. Well, like I said, that may not sound like a lot, but that, that's a lot of, that's a big difference, 25 degrees. So, yep, Amsoil Dominator Coolant Boost, uh, well worth it. Um, Amsoil Antifreeze, well worth it. This quad should be running pretty good. The only problem is with the carburetor. I can't tell if I need to tune it or not because it's just backfiring and kicking in. I think it's because it don't have its end cap on there. So, yeah, check the links below if you want a free Amazon catalog. Just click the links below. Other than that, uh, I'm out of here.